Welcome back to the Legacy Electric Z project. Today we are building doors and rocker panels. Damn, so sturdy. Okay, we're gonna run you through a little bit of uh, how I made this plug, because this is one of the only panels I'm kind of hand shaping. Um, we used a piece of half inch plywood, just cut it down to about the width that we were looking for, match it with the width of the uh, quarter panel. And then we just screwed it into the rocker panel from underneath. And it's crazy how sturdy it is, just with wood screws. <laughs> Insane. I took some pieces of you know quarter inch thick uh, plastic sheet that we had back there and I cut it into four little boxes. I was wondering what those were. Yeah and then I ground down the back of it because uh, if you look at the renders there's like a nice little detail where these are all cut out but for the mold I need them like filled in like this. Dang it's dirty. <laughs> So you know you've been getting work done. <laughs> so yeah, I just glued those down there, did a little bit of mud work, foamed this, mudded that transition. And then up here in the front, uh, we wanna make sure that all the air that's, the turbulent air that's getting in the wheel well has a nice clean path out. So uh, I worked, took a bunch of time and like made sure that our new panel can kind of just hug this upper, uh, I guess it's kind of like a frame rail, not really, but upper rail and the uh, battery support area. So everything is blended in really nicely. Um, we had to cut this back just a bit as well to make sure that the tires had clearance to uh, turn. Took a bunch of measurements on the other car that actually has the wheels at the correct offset. Because our wheels on the SEMA car are like three inches or three and a half inches wider set out than this wheel. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, we, should have, we should have plenty of clearance to turn. Um, it's tight, but it should be completely fine. And it, it'll it never hit unless we have the car jacked up and the wheels completely turned, and it would probably drop down onto this, but not a problem. But this is obviously the inner section of the fender. So our other fender panel will sit on top of this. Maybe a little airfoil kind of shape that will connect both of them. And then not for SEMA, but after SEMA, we will we'll do like a little 3D printed head that'll hold a camera so then we can run our side view mirrors are gonna be little cameras. We'll look through the little vent on the fender. So that's most of how we made this plug. The drivers, well, both doors were 3D printed in sections similar to all the other panels and then bonded on. Um, the only tricky part on that was making sure that it matched where our quarters were perfectly and then matched the front of this. So it kind of had to all happen at the same time. Set the quarters where they needed to be bond of the doors, finish the quarters, then finish work on the door and uh, rocker inner fender piece all many, at the same time. How many hours would you say you have invested into the doors and rocker? Uh, I think it was like four straight days of mudding Your favorite. at 10 hours probably a day at least. So I'd say 40, 40, 40 45 turn, maybe. Turn into a mud work hobbit. Yeah. Could oh not my get gosh, in touch dude. With them. I hate it. Day. I hate it. <laughs> it's fun if it's a small project. When it's a project, it's like days and days and days, and it's like, dude, just filing down the doors, <laughs> skimming it again, filing down. Oh my god. Kind of complete. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the doors and the rockers. Um, if you were watching closely when we did the mud work on the quarter panels, we actually mounted these rocker panels. Um, this is just a half inch piece of wood that I actually added a little 
these two up here because it needs to dive in. Um, I did not 3D print this piece because I knew I had to kind of shape it myself because the actual turning radius of these wheels, those are actually sticking out a little farther. Um, but I measured everything like that. This should barely clear. This is gonna be easy enough for me to shape out of foam. So we're gonna go ahead and foam this. But before I do that, we're going to jump and bond on the final door. Um, I did glue up all six, eight panels and bonded the passenger door on already. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of trimming on the back side of this thing. Let's see, it's a little crazy. Um, and then bond it on here. Um, we're gonna use the slower epoxy. But what we're really looking to do is make sure the, uh, the actual profile, this back edge of the door, sits flush with the quarter panel. Um, you can tell this needs to be trimmed in the back here. Um, and I did actually put the latch in here and the rubber. Um, I'm gonna have both, so I made sure that the latch was set all the way in as far as you can go with the rubber still being here and having the top of the, uh, this little bit line up perfectly. So the door is exactly where it's gonna be when it's mounted on the car with the new gasket. The new gasket might push it a little bit, but with the latch, we should be able to get it to close correctly. So that's where the door's gonna be. Make sure that this uh, door fits perfectly. Bond it on there, and then we'll uh, foam the rocker bands. next day this door has completely dried I took all the screws and stuff out so we're ready to rock and roll in the door um, I'm gonna do all the mud work at the same time though so I want to foam the rocker panel to foam like this little section right here and this nose I might need to cut some of this away but before I do that I want to glue these little vents uh, the fender has four vents the quarter panel says four vent and then these four little vents in here, continue that same design language. I just took a piece of quarter inch plastic sheet that I had, and I uh, cut it down, put a little taper on one side, and they're all gonna sit in line here. And then once the, uh, once the mold is made, this will be cut in the carpet piece right in front of each one, so they're little vents that scoop air out. It should create like a little curtain. Uh, it's taken from like Formula One style uh, ground effect stuff. We've not done any CFD testing, but it's a cool design. Uh, I would like to do some actual wind tunnel testing with this thing once we have it done, just because the hood scoop should be very aerodynamic and stuff like that. It'd be cool. Shoot a comment mentioning uh, any wind tunnels around everybody. I'd like to actually talk to somebody and maybe get something set up for maybe the end of the year. That'd be cool. But, all right, I'm gonna get to epoxying these little four guys down here. And then I'll make the probably cardboard uh, trough that I'm gonna eventually throw the foam.
our sponsor, us. Look at this. So, yeah, thank you to everybody that has bought shirts from us and stickers and uh, all the merch that we got in here. Um, this is the best way to support us. You know, our road to FEMA has cost us a lot of money. <laughs> all my money, you know. Well, yeah, split. Yeah, yeah, a lot of time. But yeah, thank you to everybody that has supported us through all of this. Um, if you go to IndustryGuards.com, you can get all our six shirts. We actually have not added these on yet, but these will, these will be added onto the website once. Uh, this is a triple XL. These will be added onto the website once. This is live, so they're on there now. Special edition three color shirt, the Bandito spell. Um, but yeah. Albert cleaned up everything in here, so it's not as chaotic as the last time you saw in here, but we are hand packing all the orders that are going out. These are all going out tomorrow morning and delivering them ourselves. So we really appreciate you guys. Again, industrygarage.com, put up all the street bandito, industry garage merch. Back to the video. I don't know if that was a B-roll clip or... Yeah. yeah, so we have a very solid door. Um, we made sure to make the door a little bit more solid than the rest of the panels. Sacrificing a little bit of weight to make sure that like something that you hit all the time. Not gonna touch the quarter panel all the time, so the quarter panel is just four sheets of 3K. Just slightly flexible, so I mean if you punch it, it'll just 
spring back. Um, but the door panel, the doors are gonna touch all the time, you know, getting in and out. So I wanna make sure they feel sturdy. Especially after we made my uh, the oh, yeah. F22 powered Z. Um, I keep wanting to call it the carbon Z, but they're both carbon now, so. We have two. How did you determine which one's carbon? Yeah, but so we made those doors and they're, it's just a full race car. It doesn't have an interior door, so it's just super flexible and it's just a little annoying. Every time somebody new gets in the car, I gotta be like, look, you gotta open it like this. So. Put your knee into it. This is gonna be, any person can walk up, hit the little, there's gonna be a little button under here. Because we're not, obviously, we shave, we don't have any door pan door handles. Um, so there's gonna be a little door popper, electronic door popper in the door. And there'll be a little hidden button under here. So you won't ever really see it, but it does stick up a little bit just for you to be able to feel it. Actually, I'll grab that button. This little dude is gonna sit, you know, somewhere probably right about there. Just gotta drill a hole. I Man, I could technically do it right now. We'll do it for you real quick. Give us a second. Man, he's real. He's Why not? Know this here. I'm trying to think of like if we're going up. Yeah, I want it on the right side. Yeah, yeah about <coughs> there. So I'm gonna put stuff in my mouth. Sure. So there we go, we got, that's our door handle, technically. Nice little tactile aluminum switch. It's nice. Very Batmobile-like. Yeah, exactly. Ash. Yeah, so this is this is our door. It's nice and sturdy, not really flexible at all. No, we it's did, very rigid. Yeah, we hit it with a piece of, we did three layers of 3K, and we hit it with a piece of the Soric Core hexagon type stuff, and then backed it by a piece of 12K. Um, so, nice, should have some impact resistance, and then we are bonding it to the metal door. Um, we did a bunch of prep work. The door needs to be primed, sanded, and uh, satin blacked on the back section of it. Um, the nice thing about this is we can keep the big impact resistant bar in the door. Um, this is a 280Z door. 280Zs have this big bar. 240s, they already had like a little C channel of metal. You could just punch it, it would dent. It was not safe. <laughs> but, so, since we have a 280, we have, this, we have safer doors, and it's also a better latch mechanism. The 240Z's latch is garbage. It's the worst. It's like a circular thing that spins and clicks. They get cruddy, and the, the spring in them lets loose. It, it's a pain. So. Some of the plus sides of having a 280 shell, even though 240s are cooler. But whatever. Um, <laughs> everyone knows. Everyone knows. Not I'm not saying anything <laughs> crazy. Everyone that has a 280 wants 240 parts on it. It's just the same thing. Um, but yeah, so nice solid doors. We need to test fit after we get the doors painted. We need to bond on the quarter panels. Test fit the door to the quarter, make sure that's all great. The latch lines up. And then we will um, test fit the fender and then set the door outer skin and bond that on to make sure everything is good, like gap wise. We don't want to bond it on slightly off to the back and then have it like touch the quarter panel every time you close the door. So, fitment of the doors should be last. So, we'll do that once we get to that. But let's go to the other side and we'll show you the rocker. So, we got a nice rocker, should be aerodynamic. I still have to cut this uh, this little channel here because that's where like the seam of oh, the yeah. frame rail meets the other frame rail. So it should go in like another half inch this way, but it's literally just sitting on here. It fits so tight, like there's no bolts on it. It's just chill. It's like good fitment, but you make me kind of nervous because we know how <laughs> you like to accidentally yeah. bump into stuff. I'll drop it. But yeah, I mean, this came out really nice. Then we use 
stabilize carbon where we could. Uh, none of this is stabilized, but here back. The fender sits over here, so you really see a lot of this. So I wanted to make sure that that weave looked very straight and true. We keep talking about it, dude. Everyone's like, shut up about the stabilized carbon. Nah, I, after seeing how you cut it up and manage with it, it, yeah. it, it definitely seems like the truth. That's right. So this will sit, this bonds, uh, well, I think we're gonna actually have these bolt on just because it might be easier for a trailer and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm gonna drill holes, run rib nuts, um, and then this little edge will be cut off. We'll probably have bolts this way because if we put bolts in here, one, we don't have very much space, but we'll also run into uh, the bottom of the door will touch the bolt heads. So we're gonna have to run some shallow bolts through there or we bond them on. They could be bonded on permanently, honestly, but. I don't know, I keep going back and forth. So I haven't drilled any holes yet. We'll see what happens. If but, you did drill holes, I guess the, what is it? Use the counter tap bit with the recess? We could, could I'd have to get clean. more hardware. I just got a ton of hardware that's button head. Oh. So it, button head's not bad either. It looks, looks nice, it's okay. We trimmed out these little spat things. I don't really know what to call them. After saying that they, de they designed these off of like looking at the under tray on a bunch of like the newer generation Formula One cars. So mm. in theory it should work, but until you put anything in a wind tunnel, you're not gonna really know if it's working or not. But more importantly, this does continue the uh, the kind of four slices that we had in the fender. And we also have in the quarter panel and we have a little, we have four slices in a little hood dash piece that I just made last night actually. But. So it's got the same design language throughout the whole car, kind of all flows. Nice little detail, it looks good. Everything came out great. All of this weirdness, this is all gonna get cut from here up. I was gonna same ask with this you, edge over, that all gets cut. But I was like, I, don't wanna, I didn't wanna ask, but now that you mentioned it, yeah. as what is this? Yeah. What, what is that? Yeah, so this, this body line right here up gets cut off, and then this edge over will get cut off as well. But for right now, just sat and cleared them because I haven't decided if I'm bonding it on or whatever, but this makes it easy to kind of just mock up. If this was completely cut off, it would just drop down over this side. So. Yeah. But it's very cool seeing the rocker panels. We have all these panels, but none of them are actually on the car. As a unit. Yeah. Having two weeks until SEMA and then seeing this is what the car looks like, it's like, uh. <laughs> but we're gonna get there. You have to believe in the process. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the mechanical stuff is done. Like we have full suspension, we have full brakes. Technotoy Tuning hooked us up with their rear big, big brake kit, oh, damn, which we didn't new. show yeah. in the other kit. Got a little spacer here too. Yeah, cause yeah. you got the washers on in the, the wheel video. Yeah, exactly. I was like, oh hell no. Those washers were sketchy. Yeah. But yeah, so we got hub-centric spacers for the front and rear. Yeah, so I mean, a lot of the mechanical stuff, it's a lot of, small, tedious wiring, but with AEM's uh, pre-made harness, it's only like, I have to wire the BMS and then change two connectors and everything else is pretty much done. So what we do at the wire, the door poppers, oh, the wire yeah. in. Little accessories. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just the little things like the headlights, taillights, blinkers, window motors, I yeah, like door actuators. Done yeah. in a day and a half. Yeah. You know, it's like, a lot of those day and a half things that we have. And then we'll bring days. some tools along the way on yeah. the road. I'm gonna be working on it while it's getting trailered to SEMA, just like a hideaway in it. I feel like the Goonies. Yeah. <laughs> it's a booty trap. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, well, this is uh, gonna wrap it up for today's video. We'll see you soon in Vegas.